We've got the keys to this gorgeous convertible right here, the MC20 Cielo. Man, this is going to be awesome. Just look at that paint. And we're just in a parking garage right now. What a beautiful car. Typical LA, any time of the day, out of the airport, straight into traffic, although at least it's moving. See that digital rear view mirror? CarPlay pulled up. Got about a hour and a half drive. Man, this car looks so good. The MC20 hiding here under the carport because it rained a bunch the last two days, so I didn't drive the MC20, but it is a beautiful day out today. So we are going to take the MC20 Cielo out spend some quality time with this absolutely beautiful drop top Maserati supercar. Holy crap, that is so close. Look at that, uh, yep, that's parking skill. I can't claim that, that's just complete sheer luck. <laughs> Protein bar storage test. <laughs> so the door panels don't have any sort of storage, no net, no little like closable cubby, any open area would obviously have everything fall out when the door opens upwards. So nothing on the doors. We do have there, but that's the wireless phone charging pad. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my phone over there. What about here? Oh, that'll fit one protein bar. There we go. <laughs> Let's put the top down. There we go. Looks like we hold that. Windows are dropping. It's pretty quick. It does it in 12 seconds. You can do it while moving up to 31 miles an hour. And just like that, rooftop open, we have a convertible supercar. Woo! This paint is amazing in the sun. It's a three layer like insane pearl just look at all the different sheens and shades it's actually gray at the very base and this aquamarine teal finish on top and man it looks absolutely beautiful we just spent the first part of today filming this velocity restorations bronco and we're about to get back in the mc20 which is pretty much on the complete opposite end of the automotive spectrum that was a 1971 the blazer was a 1972 so we're going 50 years into the future back to the mc20 now we take the Maserati out and go film some clips of this. Just finished filming some fantastic B-roll. We had a beautiful sunset and the MC20 looked so good. The cinematic shots will be absolutely amazing. But uh, that Spirited Canyon drive up here, plus sitting here idling, has really burned a lot of my fuel. Is that like a bit over half a tank? And what is it showing? A bit over a quarter now and it says 37 miles to empty, which should go up once I drive a little more efficiently, but gotta make sure I have enough fuel to get down the mountain, right? This car is so, so gorgeous. Oh my gosh. is rather small. I believe that is quite a bit smaller than the coupe because of the folding roof mechanism here. And it gets warm. The exhaust engine, everything's back here. Put my back back in here for a little bit and it's getting uh, quite toasty, but it's not that spacious. I'm gonna put this in the passenger seat. And the front trunk is even <laughs> less useful. So it's not a very practical supercar, which is a point against this being like a Grand Tour. Drop that there, close the door. Also, the door has forged carbon on it, which is pretty cool. A lot of carbon fiber on this car. A lot of carbon fiber. The trident back here, this tire thing opens up when the roof goes down. See the three indents there? Also, right behind the MC20 text here, you have the three of them. It's kind of echoing that triple vent thing that a lot of Maseratis have had on the front. Obviously, you don't have the engine up there, so they took a different way of expressing that design element. Yeah, pretty small little trunk back here, but that's forged carbon too. Lightweight carbon fiber everywhere. That stuff's not cheap. 
We have the carbon fiber rear wing right here, or well, rear wing, rear lip, spoiler thing. Doesn't have a big active or fixed wing in any way. I actually think I would like this more in body color. It also was many thousands of dollars. The entire rear fascia is also carbon fiber. We have the cielo badge right there, which means sky in Italian. Some functional, we got vents there, intake here, the trident badge there. Put the roof back up. The front grill opening, that shape is iconic Maserati. And the doors go up. You know I love doors. Who doesn't love doors that go up? It's just more fun, right? Ah, sunset, perfect weather today. What a day. What an absolutely awesome day. We gotta make our way down this awesome canyon road. We gotta get some fuel. She's thirsty. Also, really interesting exhaust sound. It's like a deep rumble, and you can almost hear like the firing order. What are you dinging at me about? Are the lights on? I gotta show you guys tomorrow the roof too. That electrochromatic, I don't know, it changes opacity, right? It goes from clear to opaque at the press of a, well, not a button, at the press of the touchscreen. Um, you wanna see the utter impracticality of the front trunk? Where's the little thing? There it is. Yeah, that's it. It's just a net, <laughs> like with like manuals and stuff. You couldn't fit anything more than, I don't know, six, seven inches tall there. It is, yeah, that is barely, that's like a front trunk of like a Ford GT, right? It's not even usable. Could have put a helmet in there. You couldn't put a backpack in there, put a notebook. So practicality is not a strength for the MC20 in that regard, but looks is certainly one. And this thing is freaking fun to drive. Oh man, is this thing fun. All right, we hop back in, sun is setting, it's getting dark. Take a look at that view, the mountains. And yeah, 37 miles to empty. That should go up a little bit, not a lot, but uh, oh, 13.4 MPG, that's probably why. All right, time to make our way down the mountain. Oh, you heard us, oh, I'm gonna put it in Corsa. Even louder, ready? You know how sometimes manufacturers try to hide the fact that their engine is turbocharged? They want it to feel like super naturally aspirated, really linear. Maserati with the MC20 did not do that. They are embracing the boost from the noises to the way the power delivery is, the feel. This is a very boosty car and it actually is super fun because of that. Ready? Look how good the MC20 looks in the carport lighting. It really shows those blue pearlescent highlight hues where the light is hitting it. Just look at it, it's like seven different colors at the same time. Gray, the light blue, a little bit of teal, and then like six other different shades of blue. Man, it just, as you guys can tell, I absolutely love the way this thing looks. This is definitely one of the prettiest supercars in the last 10 years. We're gonna head to the gym for a late night workout. And we need to fuel this up. It's really low on gas. Getting in is actually not that bad. So carbon tub, but you see right here, it cuts in. And you just kind of put your foot in there and slide your way in. Oh, not that was not that graceful. Ooh. We have the MC20 Cielo. Kind of the silhouette. Close the door. And then I think, yeah, check that out. Get this really cool Trident animation on the drive mode thing. So this is a new drive mode diode. When the coupe first launched, it was just fully analog, but now it's got this digital screen on it. The outer edge still toggles, so we can go to wet or GT. So it defaults to GT every single time. There is sport, and then if you hold it, it goes in a Corsa. There you go. But if we go back, and then that also is like a touch screen. So sport mode, if you swipe across the top, now you can adjust your dampers with again the outside. So you have soft or mid dampers, swipe back. And GT, here, go back one more, come on, GT. And if I swipe over soft and mid, you can adjust them independently. So if I go to soft, mid, Shows bid damper in the cluster. One thing that confused me was actually when I was in sport and I went to, oh no, no, I did it wrong. Wait, sport, 
<laughs> and soft dampers. I thought S meant sport for a second. I was like, wait, is this firmer or less firm? No, soft is S, mid is medium. And then there must be a, what's Corsa? Um, yeah, yeah, mid and hard for Corsa. So Corsa, track mode, most aggressive. Uh, I think it disables ESC. Oh no, you hold this for ESC off. There we go. So that ring, yep, now ESC is off. But we're gonna go back because we are not doing that right now. This is cool, but during the day when you have sunglasses on, it is hard to see. I have had to like, uh, especially polarized sunglasses and like double check and look down to make sure I was actually just in a damper. So it's cool, but analog still works well sometimes, right? Because you, you would just turn it and like the screen would show you the change in drive mode. So I don't know if I like this more than the uh, original one. Still have a quarter tank of gas, but now it's not even telling me how many miles to empty. What are you doing, Maserati? All right, the car still isn't giving me an estimated range, but the low fuel light did come up with barely under a quarter tank, so we're stopping to fuel up. To put it into park, you just pull the parking brake, hear that go, and then turn it off. And it goes into park, so that's it. Press a little button, door swings up. Ninety-one. I have a feeling this doesn't have that big of a fuel tank. Just a guess. We're about to find out. That's the rearview mirror camera. And then this is the backup camera. Just look at the curves and sculpting. With the convertible, you get the two flying buttresses. You can't see the engine. You can actually get like an optional like Trident graphic on here. Whereas the engine cover on the coupe has like kind of a Trident outline indent to it. So they're really trying to evoke that branding. But look at just the way the bodywork curves for airflow. It's this perfect combination of styling for functionality and also beauty. Looks almost like Tiffany blue up front here. It's got a much more greenish tinge to it. Probably because that's like a more yellow light there. And then you got the colder light temperature, which makes the paint look like a different temperature too. It's just cool. Wow, that's it. 11 and a half gallons, 11.434 gallons. I mean, it was still at a quarter tank, but let's see what kind of range of things I can do. 264 miles on a full tank. BC, the last 85 miles, I'm averaging 15. So, you know, trade-offs. Smiles per gallon, that's what matters. And this thing makes me smile. This is amusing because you have to accept the like the warning message every single time. You can't use anything except for heated seats. So if you really need your butt warmed, it's okay, but nothing else. Like priorities, priorities in place. Safety first, but no, no. Safety second, heated seats first. <laughs> wow, we are stuck in some traffic on PCH. I wanna show you one of the coolest features of the MC20 Cielo, and it's the roof. So you see up there, that roof, it's uh, pretty clear right now. It's a cloudy day, so it was easier to see yesterday when it's super sunny out, but at the press of a button, I can make it opaque. So we go over to the vehicle, and then that right there, the toggle, or it's a touch button, or touch icon, it's yellow. If I toggle that, it goes opaque. It's way easier to tell when it's sunny, but doop, you can see, there's a light post, it's gone. Pretty cool, right? That does remind me of a complaint. Everything is in the touchscreen. There are no buttons. I mean, we have this drive mode dial, drive, manual, reverse, and then windows, which is lock on. But like, there's no climate, there's no anything. It's all in the touchscreen, and that's not my favorite. You gotta kinda dig through the touchscreen for everything, even opening and closing your roof. There are shortcuts, like this pulls up your uh, heated seat and temp shortcut, and things like that. But, like, ah. What's wrong with buttons? Can I have some buttons, please? Just had a fantastic time over in the canyons around Malibu with the MC20. I filmed the review and then we cruised down PCH with the top down, the sun is setting. Today's weather cleared up originally. It was all drizzly and gloomy and cloudy in the morning. I drove an Aston Martin DB12 Volante uh, back in the MC20 and I, you know what, fueled up last night, right? Went to the gas station last night. I'm down to about a third of a tank, 96 miles to empty, so we need to go get gas again this thing is a beast in the canyons like my heart rate i gotta check my heart rate like tracker it was elevated the entire time exhilarating that was so much fun with the top down man but uh yeah so we're gonna go to the gas station again you're gonna be doing that a lot if you buy one of these because the gas tank isn't huge and when you're having fun in boost it burns fuel 
the MC20 definitely grabs quite a lot of attention. It helps that it looks so good, the full supercar experience, the paint is absolutely gorgeous, the doors go up. I've had a lot of people stop, ask about a compliment. Just had a guy in the parking lot asked about the car, and he's like, oh my gosh, Maseratis are so awesome. So yeah, that uh, definitely checks that box on the whole supercar experience. This car is pretty awesome. Uh, I need to go grab some stuff, run in some final errands before we're heading back for the day. It's been a long day, been out since 6.30 a.m., driven 160 miles in the car. A lot of, a lot of smiles in the car and uh, a lot of fuel too, but worth it, worth it. We're finally back. Let me give you guys a quick interior tour before it gets dark. So on the seats here, we have the Maserati Trident embroidered on the headrest. And then this really cool pattern, this angled pattern. It's like a suede insert. It's echoed on the door panel too. On the doors we have like this strap handle and then that's the button you push to have the door pop out so you can swing it up. The Sonus, Sonus Faber, Sonus Faber, Sonus Faber, whatever the sound system, the speakers. We have an MC20 logo there on the dash. And then this is all nice leather. That 10.25 inch infotainment screen, I've shown this to you guys plenty of times. There are shortcuts at the top for things like your roof control and putting the little window up and down. And then this actually has carbon fiber up here too, it has the interior carbon fiber pack. So across the middle, the drive dial, um, drive manual, reverse, and then we have window switches, lock, unlock, and then this is the volume toggle and track forward and back. I didn't, there's no like track forward and back on the steering wheel. So you have to use this one if you wanna skip to the next uh, song or something like that. The steering wheel though, carbon fiber, flat bottom here. It's all matte carbon fiber. Uh, Alcantara here where you grip it. Maserati Trident, start stop button, launch control button. Uh, this is like phone control stuff, volumes. This is the vehicle lift button, which is very convenient. I have used that a lot because this car is quite low. We have fixed carbon fiber paddle shifters. They're pretty nice right there. The actuation is very nice too. The turn signal is interesting because it doesn't stay down. So if I indicate all the way left, it goes back to center. And if you cancel it, if you go all the way up, it activates the right turn signal, right? So you gotta do like kind of like a half click to cancel it. Or if you do the half one, it just clicks a couple times. There you go, right? So you get used to it pretty quickly. And there's a button on the very end here for changing like the screen on the left. So that goes to my uh, compass um, and then back to trip. And the same thing on the right, it's currently on the tire temp display, but I can show pressures. We can also do like the brake versus the gas, uh, how much boost and so forth. And then on the left, we have some headlight controls. That's for adjusting the mirrors. Your parking brake is down there along with the trunk release. It's a pretty simple interior. Oh, digital rear view mirror. So I can flip this for a regular mirror or digital rear view mirror, which is definitely convenient. I am a fan of that. Got the top down right. Oh, sunset is actually nice. That's pretty much the interior. There's no storage behind the seats there, but we do have more speakers. There is a little center, not very spacious. A little cubby there and then a cup holder, which is in between the seats, just one. Just one cup holder. I'm falling more and more in love with this car because I mean, it just looks so good. And then the handling, the excitement, it does check a lot of boxes, but that price point still has me struggling a bit. 265-ish option up to 340 for this one. I would ignore, I would probably not do any of the exterior carbon. Saves you 50 grand right there. And honestly, if I was buying one, I'd probably wait for the depreciate a little bit. Coupes are coming down. And I mean, that's a fact of supercar life, right? I mean, my R8 was bought used because it depreciated. Like that's what you do unless you're super rich and you can buy these things brand new. If you are super rich and you want to buy a unique supercar experience that's not like your neighbor's Ferrari and your friend's Lamborghini and all the whatever else is at the country club, this is worth some consideration. Everybody that's driven one has told me how much they liked it too and how exciting and visceral it is. And these are people who have driven a lot, a lot of cool cars. So I count myself uh, among that group where uh, I am pretty impressed with the MC20. Well, that was just an absolutely beautiful, amazing drive over the mountains. Where are, where are we now? We're just at some random ranger station on the other side. But the scenery, breathtaking, the road, a little sketchy at moments just because of all the rocks and like random lanes not being there because of the rainfall and everything and mudslides. But the MC20, man, we just stopped here and there was these three ladies who were biking from Bakersfield, right? Like yeah. that is 
hours by car, which, and they stopped and wanted to check out the car, let them sit in the car. They thought it was really, really cool too. So this definitely gets attention. It helps that the doors go up. The paint is absolutely beautiful, but I've experienced a lot, a lot of people uh, either taking pictures, seeing the car, came out to it at a parking lot and somebody was just like walking in circles around it, checking it out. So that is a compliment to the MC20 without a single doubt. Matt, what are your thoughts now that you've gotten to experience the MC20? Lovely car. Lovely car. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, true supercar. Yeah. You know, in, in the sense that uh, it's it's a lot. You know, full you get uh, you know full turbo noise, engine noise. It's like it's right behind your ears. Lots of induction noise. Um, great handling, quick car. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, and it's a it's beautiful. It I is mean, beautiful. probably the strongest point is this kind of like Coke bottle yeah. styling. Yeah, very unique. It's you know all the arrow is sort of hidden. Um, it's a it's a work of art. Yeah, absolutely. Just. The curves, I think the Cielo looks even better. I like the flying buttresses a lot. You can't see the engine anymore. There's no engine cover there, but the flying buttresses here and everything make it so nice. We've had the back window down the entire drive with the roof up because it is rather chilly up here. See all the forged carbon here on the door. And again, of course, doors that go up are just better. They're just better, they're more fun. You said buttress. What are you, 12? <laughs> Finishing up our time with the MC20 Cielo. We're heading off to the airport to drop this car off and pick up another one. I'm gonna miss having doors that go up. I actually really, really miss that. I gotta buy like a McLaren or, or an MC20. Some final thoughts on the MC20 as we let the engine warm up. This is a really, really interesting option in the supercar space, but it, it sits kind of in between two segments to me. There's like the hardcore, all out, more track focused supercars, and then there's the more luxurious kind of grand touring supercars. Because this is definitely quick, fun to drive, exhilarating. It has the performance, carbon ceramic brakes, carbon tub and so forth, but it's not all out hardcore track focused as much. But then if you look at the more luxury GT side, it doesn't have the practicality or maybe the comfort or things like that that you would want in one of those options. So it's kind of in between. It has a very cool, unique character. It definitely is absolutely drop dead gorgeous. Just beautiful. This paint really does it for me. I am in love with the paint on this Tiello. It is so cool having a hardtop convertible here in Southern California when we have some beautiful days. Put the top down, go for an amazing drive. Some complaints, I'm not a fan that everything is through the center Central touch screen. I'm not a fan that it's not very practical. Like that front trunk is, is a joke. It's, it's useless. And a rear trunk isn't that practical either. I have my backpack and the passenger seat. So practicality is very challenging for this one. Um, it is quite low. I, I've, I've scraped maybe. No, I didn't scrape. I did somebody else scrape. It's very, very low. It has the front lift, but you got to be very, very careful. Uh, quite low of a supercar. Um, but the, the upsides, I mean, the, the boosty engine, the noises, and the looks. Oh, the looks. So many people were stopping, taking pictures, got thumbs up. At a parking lot, people were just like walking around the car. People would pull over and ask about it and things like that. So that is a um, extremely high piece of praise for a supercar. And we're in Los Angeles, right? Or you see supercars everywhere. G63 is about as well be as common as a Toyota Camry. The price point is also the last big challenge. This one is optioned up so high to $340,000. Gone, gone through like over $50,000 in optional carbon fiber, carbon ceramic brakes, 10 grand, and a bunch of other things adds up. So 340 is a lot. I know everything Thing is really really expensive these days like the Ferrari 296 is a 450 to 500 thousand dollar car when you option it up and that is a lot more than like the 48 was or the F8 was um, but if you get rid of some of the options at high 200s I could see this being like a, a new supercar price point um, because it is more convertible and more expensive to get the convertible I personally think this would be an amazing car between 200 to 250 um, and then obviously used you're talking, I mean, when these things get down to the, the hundreds range, right? High hundreds, 180, 190, which coupes are there now? Oh boy, that is a really, really cool option if you've played around with the McLaren, you've done the Ferraris, you've done the Lamborghini, you wanna try Maserati. And despite the challenges the brand has had in the last generation, the last couple model years of different model, like I did not like the Ghibli much, 
never drove the Quattroporte, but never liked the looks of it. Um, and the Levante I wasn't impressed with. So the brand doesn't have the prestige maybe that it did uh, 20 years ago. Like I remember the Gran Turismo, I was like, oh my gosh, the MC Chevrolet. I was like that, the MC12, like this is aspirational. This is the goal, seeing the Quattroporte on Top Gear in that episode where they had the Panamera, the Quattroporte and the Aston. And the Quattroporte by far was the most beautiful, best Saudi, like it was so amazing, right? Um, but this signifies they're going in the right direction. They're fixing the brand, uh, building awesome cars. I like the Gracale Trofeo. I liked this. So here's the same Maserati, keep improving. But the MC20 Cielo, I would be sad to say goodbye to this car. It's been a really, really fun week spending time with it, seeing what it's like to live with. I've burned a lot of gas. I'm pretty sure I went to the gas station five times this week for this car. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> worth it, absolutely worth it. Hope you enjoyed this vlog. Check out my uh, formal review, driving this in a more dynamic manner and talking about the technical things and evaluating and comparing it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.